Hi everybody. So today we actually have a really interesting video for you. I am going to be talking about astronomical data. And there's a really amazing thing going on in the night sky on Halloween this year. It's called a hunter's moon. And that is when there are two full moons in one month. It's quite rare. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how do you get access to that data? What are some of the complications that are happening in today's world with that data? And special treat at the end, I am going to be filming the hunter's moon from none other than Salem, Massachusetts on Halloween night. So make sure you check that out. And stick around. Astronomical data is some of the oldest data that we use in science, and quite honestly, a lot of other places that have a lot of effect on our regular everyday lives. This year in 2020, there will be a second full moon in October, on Halloween to be exact, and that goes by a few names, Hunter Moon, Blood Moon, and also Blue Moon. These terms come from a variety of observations throughout the decades, with the first recording in none other than the Farmer's Almanac in 1946. So why the creative names? People of the past often associated earthly changes to what was going on in the space above their heads, ranging from the weather to biological phenomena. We now understand these astronomical occurrences do in fact have a basis in science. And even more fascinating, astronomical observations of the past are regularly used in modern astronomy. In 2018, the Smithsonian Magazine reported that big data is transforming how astronomers make discoveries, and that the next game changer is likely lurking in the data we already have. So for instance, a thousand black holes were discovered in 2018. We have found proof of lower sea levels over millennia. And we also know that the true north of Earth's northern pole is now moving more northward, 30% faster than a century ago. So these findings were not from modern data, but from data over 20 years old and often older. Nature, Smithsonian, NASA, they all agree it will likely take scientists years to uncover the insights hidden within the zettabytes of data produced by the roster of sky observation projects each year. The Atacama Array in Chile alone creates more than 750 terabytes of data per year. So what are the biggest hurdles for astronomical data? Well often suffers from a lot of the same data issues that we all face. And that is too much data and not enough people and compute power to work on it. The data can often be very noisy. There's also heavy storage costs. And more importantly than probably a lot of these other ones is there is no good roster of standards for how to classify how to code, how do you actually get this data put into a schema that will allow interoperability and therefore more access and insight generation. So how can you access and make sense of some of this data that is around us? Well, there are quite a few projects. I have more of these linked below, but here are just a few notable ones. So the Einstein at Home project allows you to use your own computer's idle time as compute power so scientists can search for black holes. Many of the sky observation projects like Hubble and SkyMapper are open source. Harvard AstroData and NOAA, which is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, have free resources to learn and work with astronomical data, as well as more homegrown resources like the nightsky.org and weathersource.com. So, okay, great. I can access the data and I know where to learn a little bit more about it. Well, there's some other data things that you might want to think about learning as well. So there are a few tools that you can check out. AstroML, Auton Lab, and more are specific tools that you can work with. And primarily what these tools are looking to do are, again, very similar to what we 
normally have to deal with with data, and that is classification, regression, clustering, and time series algorithms, as well as feature selection and extraction, of course. The other thing is there are a lot of people working on knowledge graphs in this space. I have linked below a great video on the International Space Station's knowledge graph that was done by Neo4j. And with that, that is the conclusion of the astronomical data piece of this video. And if you want to check out that hunter's moon, keep on watching. Now we're going to wait till the sun comes down. Okay, how to switch locations. So we are now by the ocean <laughs> at the Salem Wharf. But there's the moon. It's a little atmospheric noise here, but you can hear the waves. So thank you for watching this video. It is now very cold. If you are in the Salem area, you know we got a weird snowstorm. <laughs> that astronomical data would have helped me understand that there was going to be some snow. All right, and with that, thank you very much for watching, and I'm gonna catch you next time.